What's up everybody? I know this video took a little minute. I had a lot on my plate the last month. I had to move, had my 30th birthday, had to go to a baby shower, get a new job. I gotta touch grass. But hey, we back. And I think you guys are gonna like this one. Yeah, take a knee. So last year I built the Buster Gundam and the Blitz Gundam. Two of the bad guy suits from Gundam Seed. Now originally I had no intention of finishing the set, but things change. And today, I got another one for that ass. This is Rim Zero, and you're watching the review for the Master Grade. Duel Gundam! Duel Gundam! Duel Gundam! Ready? Of all the mobile suits from Gundam Seed, the Duel Gundam seems the most generic and designed. That's because it was created first, and the others were developed from its blueprints, including the Strike Gundam. I had no intention of getting this until it popped up at my local hobby town, and a friend of mine convinced me to get it very easily. It's been a while since I've seen a traditional shield, and this thing just looks massive. Lots of detailing to be done too from the look of it. Let's get things set up and hit the paints. New color here with the intermediate blue. This is sort of like a robin's egg, a type of color you'd see on a traditional fighting plane. Metallic blue for the shield and several parts of the main armor makes it just a little darker and it sparkles. Brilliant orange? What can I say? It doesn't look hardly different than the base color. So whatever. I was going to hit the body with the haze gray, but I think I'm just going to stick with the shield for now. I'm using a mix of both gun metals for the weapons and some of the highlights in the armor. And light gray just to darken up the base white color. First thing in the build, gotta put the pilot in the cockpit. It's just a thing you do. So I know a lot of you guys said the build is the part you most enjoy in a Gundam video, so I'm gonna make a point to spend a little more time on that. If you wanna skip ahead, I got timestamps down below. I'm starting to see a couple of those colors come through, and it's really looking like a torso now. A couple of orange vents in the chest for that little contrast. This waist part fits on from the bottom, but you need the hip parts to keep it locked in place. Nice blue armor on the chest and back that clips together. And finish up the cockpit. So now we're working on the backpack, which has four orange thrusters. This starts to look really good once you put the blue armor on top of it. Gotta get that nice contrast, man. That big shell of armor to finish it up. Attach it to the torso. Damn, that looks good. Moving on to the head with these stupid rubber poly caps, man. It always fits the first side no problem, but when you have to close everything together, it almost never works in one go. Once you get past that, the rest is a breeze. You got the cheek plating, a little bit of armor on the head, kind of mohawk, and garnish it with a sexy silver V-fin, baby. Alright, feels like we're actually starting to get somewhere now. Damn, those colors look good. So we're moving on to the limbs. I'm just going to do one arm and one leg for time's sake. So all of the Gundam Seed kits use the exact same base frame. It's giving me some serious deja vu right now. The arms are pretty basic in appearance, with just some blue highlights on the wrist. Gonna speed build these shoulders real quick. 
They have some handlebars in the top, just like the Strike Gundam. Interesting design. Gonna slap together everything I've got so far at the top of the screen. I know it's not the best camera work, but I still wanted to give you guys an idea of where we're going so far. Moving on to the legs, well, starting with the feet first. That's how we always do it. Starting with the upper legs and building in the knee joints. Stretch out the leg and finish up the inner frame. Starting to add on the outer armor. Casual banana in the background there. There's a lot of smaller pieces going into these legs to make up all that white. Add the ball joint to the bottom so you can attach the feet later on. Just a few more pieces to go, including the blue armor on the knees. Get the other knee. Attach the feet. I skipped the assembly of the waist armor, but I'm gonna make it up for you with one of my favorite songs. Oh yeah, this is happening. So here's the dual Gundam after some panel lining and a couple of stickers. I gotta say, I'm loving the contrast of the darker blue with the white on the armor. And that little bit of orange just pops so good on this guy. You got this big honking bazooka, which I don't recall ever seeing in the anime. And there's no mention of it on the box either. I'm always a fan of these big boy weapons, even if they're not the most ergonomic. Let's check the loadout. First up, we got the beam rifle with the grenade launcher attachment. This has pretty good detail on it for something that's so small, but it's a complete brick. You can't even adjust the handle on this thing. Next up, we got the rail bazooka, the gay bulg. This thing is a big old brick of plastic, but all things considered, it's got pretty good detail too. I had a total heyday with a gold marker on this one, but can you really blame me? It looks awesome. We've got a nice colorful shield with a sort of trident design on the end. That little bit of orange on the blue makes for such a nice contrast. The underside of the shield is just crazy amount of detail on this. It's almost sad because you hardly ever see the underside. You can fold out the middle section and swing it left or right to stick it on either arm. Next up, we got the shoulder mounted railgun, the Shiba. This is a nice little brick weapon with some intricate details on it. A little handle pops out on the back and you can wield it as a gun, but it's mainly used when mounted to the shoulder of the assault shroud. We'll get to that in a bit. All you gotta know is that circular part in the middle is what mounts it to the shoulder. Last up, we got the good old fashioned bean savers. Pretty in pink. These are some pretty long boys. Nothing too crazy in terms of detail, just a little gold on top for the shits and giggles. Now arguably, more important than the weapons, we have the assault shroud. This is used to bolster the Dual Gundam's defenses, and the extra thrusters help its movement in space combat. Instead of swapping out parts, this armor fits the form of the base Gundam. I was so convinced that this was a hand grenade waiting to happen, but this is actually really competently made. You gotta remove the hands first, because otherwise that wrist armor is just not gonna fit. The waist armor is the only part that's a bit of a pain. It's a little tricky just to get it on there, and it pops off really easily. When I put the backside on, I press in on both ends until I hear a shit ton of clicks. The leg armor slots in easy peasy.
The bottom of the thruster clips on the middle of the backpack. And the top half slides over the top two thrusters. So here's the dual Gundam, fully equipped in the Assault Shroud. So now our boy's got some serious bulk and a new shade of blue to go with it. There's definitely a lot more going on here now, and that backside is just insane. Look at all that color separation. Now I might have done the panel lining off screen, but we've still got the decals. So we got a sheet for stickers, and the other is for dry transfers. I feel like people are very divided on dry transfers. Some of them love it, others would rather use water slides. I've had a couple cases where water slides will dry up and fall off the Gundam in time, whereas the dry transfers just tend to have a lot better staying power. It really just comes down to proper application, and it never hurts to use a top coat. I was really going at it for a solid 30 seconds just to make this thing stay on. Switching over to the stickers now. Now usually I'd advise against using these on a painted kit, but there's some really cool looking ones here, I just can't resist it. You really want to take your time to line it up before you commit to that placement. Knock out the other side here real quick. Same deal, just taking my time. Not quite as clean, but still looks pretty good. The boxy outline of the sticker is going to show pretty bad in the right lighting, so I'm going to leave it on there for a whole 5 seconds before I decide I'm just going to rip it off and do things my way. couple of things to go over real quick. Little stress test to see if any armor falls off. That's pretty impressive. The articulation of the base Gundam is pretty good, and the additional armor doesn't hinder it like you probably think. It really helps that the elbows and knees are still exposed. That was a smart design choice. You got the missile pod on the left shoulder with a nice bit of detail. The railgun gets a nice range of motion and doesn't get in the way. Adjustable thrusters on the leg armor with some nice detail on the undersides that I forgot to hit. Whoops. And these things pop off so easy, in a good way. Lastly, the adjustable fins on the back side. The bottom one's got a lot of movement. The top one, not so much. So here we have a kit with a very bombastic design, meaning it's very visually striking, even if it doesn't really do all that much. The weapons are a very easy plus. You've just got so much to work with here, you're gonna have a heyday. The Assault Shroud basically means you're getting two Gundams in one, and the decals are pretty good, in my opinion. Now on the downside of things, this is a pretty hefty boy. It's a bit of a balancing act when you're trying to pose them on a stand. And that bazooka is a little bit clunky. This kit is far from a hand grenade, but that waist armor does not want to stay on. If I haven't said it enough already, this thing is bricky as hell. But he sure is purdy. All things considered, this is a pretty awesome kit. It really caught me off guard. This is way better than the Blitz Gundam. Honestly, I think it might be the best of the whole bunch. And that's gonna do it for the Duel Gundam. I appreciate your patience and support, guys, and hey, thanks for watching. I'm still getting moved in here. I hope you like the look, and yeah, I know the echo's pretty bad. I'm working on it. So next time, we're going old school with my first Master Grade Xeon kit. Can you believe it? Next time, we got the Master Grade Zagok, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Ren Zero, out.